This week, we're taking a dive into Strahd von Zarevich as a precursor to our deep dive into Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft. We'll learn all about his history and how he works within the domains of Dread and Castle Ravenloft. Some spoilers ahead for Curse of Strahd. You've been warned. Welcome to We Speak Common. Hello and welcome to another episode of the D&D podcast for everyone because here, say it with me, we, we speak, speak common. common. Yeah, it's nice and cheesy now, isn't it? We've, <laughs> we've got into it. Uh, this is the D&D podcast brought to you by some wonderful partners. Uh, of course, first and foremost, the Dice Dungeon, who have nearly been a partner for an entire year. Uh, in June, they would have been supporting the show um, and we will have been supporting their wonderful shop for a uh, good year, which is uh, lovely. Very, really nice stuff. You can head over to the Dice Dungeon website. There's a link in the description below to check out all of their wonderful premium D&D dice, as well as uh, all of the other kind of paraphernalia you would need to play Dungeons and Dragons. Did you like that word, Phoebe? That was a good good facial expression there. Isn't that the right word? <laughs> yeah, paraphernalia. Like, things that you can have. Okay. Hey Siri, define paraphernalia. Miscellaneous articles. Especially the equipment needed for a particular activity. Okay, okay. Thank you very much. I learned something from Joe and it's vocabulary. <laughs> uh, they have lots of different paraphernalia, including uh, licensed D&D books like the upcoming... Make sure I get my dates right this week because I got them wrong last week. Yes, upcoming mm-hmm. Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft, which, as you know, if you listened to last week's episode, I'm very excited about. As well as uh, wonderful, wonderful dice. Uh, and I am also getting a set of the shadow, uh, the the uh, plain dice, the shadow. Oh, see, now I can't remember the name of oh, them. We've been talking about it. We've been talking about them well. for blooming weeks. Hang on. I've got to tell you the name because they are so gorgeous. And I want you to go and look at them. This is your Plainal, homework. isn't it? Plainal. But no, that is, no, because that sounds way too close Plain to anal. And if they had said to me, hey, we're going to call these dice plain all, I would have said, please don't no, do that. No, 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 no. As a, as a, as a market testing, don't call them plain all. <laughs> Although now, plain all dice. That's, a, that's a different type of item you could buy. I think that's... From, uh, from, from a different kind of store. Probably a thing, though. I don't think I want that store sponsoring... <laughs> uh, the, 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 the podcast this is a long um this is a long ad read plain shard dice plain shard yes and i am getting uh, and you were gonna say shadow i am getting shard. the shadow fell set yeah because we were talking about it because we were morning. talking about the shadow fell shard this morning yeah with D chat so uh, go and check those out the plain shard dice the shadow fell ones in particular they are my personal favorite i'm very excited mm, to get those of too. course the whole point of this read is that you get uh 10 off your checkout if you use the code we speak common and that's your entire bar it get your foot off that squeaky chair because that is going to be really annoying in, ed- in editing thank Damn you it. thank you try and man spread over there uh, the <laughs> other partner of this show this is a real bad intro in it is describe d-s-c-r-y-b dot com describe are like a service i have never found anywhere else very unique if you're not great at creative writing they have professional creative writers doing all of the box text that you would find in adventures but for your home games they have scenes for monsters for locations for spells all that kind of stuff and there's over 1500 scenes on there right now you can get access to a load of them for free you get access to the rest of them by having a monthly subscription. If you want 10% off every single month, uh, head to the description below, click on the link, and uh, use the code comment on checkout, and it will apply every single month. That one was easier because I didn't forget the name of their product. <laughs> it's, good that, uh, it's good that I had a catch-up meeting with Ben and Dave yeah, sorry, yesterday, ben and Dave. isn't it? <laughs> Not today. Ooh, oh, that, all good. It's signed in for another year now, guys. So, this is what he's stuck with. Um, and of course, the other people that support the show are the wonderful Patreons who are direct supporters. If you want to find out more about that, what you can get, including things like a private Discord server and supplement books that no one else gets created by yours truly, then uh, head to the description below or we speak Um, You know who you are. You guys are beautiful human beings. Uh, okay. Hi, Phoebe. Hi. How you doing? I'm all right. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> no, I'm going to drink some water now because I'm sweating. I don't think I needed the introduction today, to be fair, because I've already uh, spoken quite a bit. <laughs> yeah, you have. Um, we are... Oh, 
just whacking the microphone. I'm having a bit of a palava today. I've had a, a bit palava. A palava. Oh, okay. That's have, different to palava. Yeah, I had a bit of a palava last week as well. Just all my equipment breaking on me. Mm. First it was a microphone, now it's my desk. So um, I'm a bit all over the place. Probably why that intro was so chaotic. Um, mm. Just need a minute. I just need a minute. I do. Yeah. So how are you? How are you getting on? No, I am good. I am happy and thriving. <laughs> oh my God. Are you all right? What's going on? Just, you know, living my life. Started a new job. Love it. Love the people there. Yeah. Um, started my online business. Love it. I'm very proud of it. Every time anyone asks me about it, I'm just beaming. And Do you want to plug it? I'm happy. We'll do it at the end. Okay. Oh, okay. You, you assume <laughs> that the audience is going to stay that long. That's that's brave of you. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Well, oh, if you want to find out, now you have to. So. <laughs> Great. Okay. There are some D and D bits on your. There is. Yeah. Shop as well, and so. there will probably be more because because you're a big nerd. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. Well, that's good. Thanks. How's um? <laughs> how's home life? Home life ugh, not so great. No. <laughs> no. You know. Boyfriend's just... Waste of space. Gets very angry when his kit doesn't work. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So. Yeah. It's a shame. Oh, well. <laughs> you, you can't do better, so, you know. <laughs> um, I, like, I like pushing the buttons when you've got either friends in front of you or a microphone in front of you because you can't, you, you won't lash out. We found that out last night in our D&D game. Mm-hmm. Um, probably very dangerous to bring this back up, actually. Probably. Uh, but you got a rule wrong. Maybe we don't. Um, I didn't get a rule you, you did. Do you know, oh boy, <laughs> I didn't get a rule wrong. Well, there was miscommunication a long time ago. And no, there was misunderstanding on your part a long time ago. <sighs> See, here's what happened, okay? Phoebe's no, playing... No, we don't need to tell the world. Phoebe's because playing... I, right. I mean, all of our friends agreed with me, so... Phoebe's playing a spell, a spell point sorcerer, right? And Which you can get by joining the Patreon. You can. Thank you. Good plug. Thanks. Um, there, there's, there's free versions on the internet, so yeah, it's but not really. Better. Thank you. <laughs> um, I can't say that because it sounds pretentious, but yeah, thank but it you. Is. Thank you. And I would never have played a sorcerer without it. So. I don't. Mine is, mine is simpler. Yes. Mine exactly. you could implement yeah. like to your session if you're playing it tonight. Um, yes. The others I've seen how are much more complex, and if that's what you want, then great. Anyway. Anyway, um, <laughs> I, you're playing a spell point sorcerer, and you have to spend your spell points on both spell levels that you spell slots and meta magic. And as always, cantrips don't cost you spell points to cast; they are free, right? Just like if you're a wizard, they don't cost you spell slots. They don't cost yeah, spell slots. Exactly. Which I know. Yeah. I know this. However, Just so that we're all aware, I do know that very simple rule of D&D, that cantrips are free. However, last night, you, were, you, you revealed that you were paying points to cast cantrips. Because what happened was, you said to me, I feel like we need to air this. This is therapy at this point. This isn't. You said to me <laughs> no. a few sessions back, and we, this is a couple of months ago, I want to cast X cantrip, which, whatever one it was, doesn't matter what it was, with um, the twinned spell yeah. meta magic. And that's, that says in it, the meta magic, that it costs the spell level. The spell level or what? of. No. It, no, it said the spell the level. The spell yes. level of point, right? And of, yeah. you said, well, the cantrip is free, so is the meta magic free? And I said, no, for cantrips, meta magics cost one point unless stated otherwise. So now I have written next to it, mm-hmm. cost spell point or one, as in, sorry, cost spell level or one. Mm-hmm. So if the spell doesn't have a level, it costs one meta magic point, sorcery point to, to cast the meta magic. Correct. So then Which what, I understood. Right. So then what were you doing last night? Because when in the heat of the moment we, we were trying to get through combat, you, it sounded like you were saying you were spending points to cast cantrips. No, there was, there was miscommunication between everyone in our party and everyone was, I think, was thinking that I was trying to do something else. Right. So what were you trying to do? What I was trying to do, 
I wasn't using twinned. I wanted to use quicken, quicken which, which is two. two sorcery points. Correct. And so, but was I, what was I doing? Was but I doing you it asked a- me, you said, you said, oh yeah, but that's going to cost me three points. And I said, why? Because you thought no, from your notes. No, sorry, it's something was going to cost me five. And everyone was like, whoa, what? And yeah, said, why is yeah, it going to cost you five it points? Two, it was a spell level of two. Yeah. So that was going to cost me three points to 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 create make full stop yeah and then quickened was two points and then quickened was two points so it's five points yeah and then someone was like why don't you twinned it instead i can't remember i'm yeah. not gonna lie I but it came the way it came across is that you were saying that you would have to spend like the extra point to cast the cantrip and everyone was like no 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 don't you're not, you don't have to cast cantrip with, with points. You just cast but them. What I was, when I was talking about points, it was I was talking about the meta magic, not the cantrip. Yeah. And that's where everyone was getting confused because I do struggle sometimes with explaining myself. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we all do though, especially yeah. when, you know, there's like, you're, you're sitting in a hmm. call with seven people. With, with seven DMs. Effectively. Yeah. And, and, and they're all you trying hear, to tell me how to play yeah. the game. And, and I'm like, I know. In the background as well, it's like. And I'm sat there going, I know. I know the answer. I know, I know. cantrips yeah. are free. Yeah. Stop telling me cantrips are free. <laughs> I know this. And then, you know, when you've got your boyfriend just taking the piss out of you in front of your friends. I mean, you would do the same. Just the way me. to make me angry. You would do the same. Yeah, I would, yeah, sure. Um, but it was a lot of fun. Um, <laughs> But this is the thing as well, and that's a side note. As a side, aside to this whole conversation, um, it's having having like I think we've got there's me, James, Ray, Wesley, kind of, uh, and Craig is a DM too. Although Craig uh, doesn't weigh in on the DM decisions as much, I think because they have they feel like they have less experience than us, so they they chime in when they know. Hmm. Whereas I think the rest of us will always chime in. Sometimes, Apart from me. <laughs> sometimes we're very, very good. And like, if I'm DMing the game, the other guys will stop and let me describe it. Yeah. Sometimes when it gets here, like last night, we're all like, no, 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 no. And we all try to explain it. And so we're like, I don't need five people explaining that. I mean, that just makes it hard to understand. Are free. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's the takeaway. Um, we've learned so when I'm a DM. Yeah. When you're the DM, you can do whatever the fuck you want, mate. I feel like that's not going to be the case. It's what do not, you mean? It's not going to be the case. Because I, c- we play with all DMs. Yeah. You have a party full of DMs. But you've got to remember that when I play... And if it is my first time, all of them are going to be interjecting their no. opinions. So, no, so, no, no. This is, this is, and I that's don't what think, scares me about it, I think. So that, I think, is a genuine, this is not where we were going with this topic today, but that is a genuine, no. that is a genuine fear for new DMs, right? Yeah. That I don't, I've never done it before, I'm going to get it wrong. But, and there, there are people out there like that that will jump in, but I'm speaking for myself personally, but also I believe our group is mostly like this. Mm. If you have good players and good people, yeah, they won't do that. No. When we play a game in UDM for the first time, which I'm very excited for, I will not chirp in. Until I ask you to. Until you ask me to, or unless... It, it's, you get, someone gets a rule so wrong that it's going to break yeah, everything. Yeah. Then yeah. I'll say, just so you know... This is how this should work because then you'll learn, right? Then you know because mm. you'll remember. Oh, mm-hmm. that's how that works because I got it wrong and I had to change it. I had to change my understanding on the fly, yeah. right? And people can only learn by making mistakes. And that's not that's not going to be people being like, for example, if you said to us, "Okay, I'm going to run my first game as yeah. DM. I'm going to do it in my own world, where in my world, um, fucking I don't know, dragons can uh, turn invisible at will, right?" All of them. Every single dragon. (laughs) Okay. I can't sit there and go, that's not how dragons work. I mean, I can, but that would be wrong for me to do because this is your world. This is your game. Hmm. Much like, for example, when, um, you know, we play, I play a game and I DM a a game and then James runs a game and I play in it. He might Hmm. use a stat block differently to me. Or for example, last night you fought grungs in Mm -hmm. Tomb of Annihilation. I gave those grungs the... Uh, the traits that goblins have the height the ability to do nimble escapes yeah because they're small little creatures another dm might think do you know what i don't want to do that what they were five feet tall. one of them was five feet tall the rest of them were short okay one of them was a tall grung (laughs) 
because he was the leader. Big boy. Big boy. <laughs> Big fuck boy. Carry on. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, so I don't think, the, I guess that there's a genuine fear that everybody has, but I think that and everybody, yeah. new DMs have, and I think that you're right, is that there's nothing wrong for you saying that, but I don't think you need to feel that way, especially not with our group. No, I don't think so. And I think maybe with my, when I do eventually DM, mm. it's going to be... It'll be for a small group. Yeah, a yeah. lot smaller. And like a three lot, people. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think I And think I think that's probably the people that we've been playing with the longest as well, so that Me, I James, feel the com- Wes. most comfortable. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I totally agree. I think that's, um, that's a good course of action to take for your first game. And I think that's a good one for any new DM. Yeah, some people, I mean, some you, people don't have that ob- ability. But the, the, I think the people that you trust to not go, um, actually... <laughs> There's this. We've been watching that show. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm actually show. I Do you know what I mean, that. though? That is because I think that can dishearten you. Yes. As an can. EDM, and you can be like, oh, why am I trying? Mm. Okay, I'm just getting it all wrong. Why am I trying? Why yeah. do I bother? Yeah. Whereas. Hey, I still feel like that sometimes DMing now. But there is like, you know, there's a difference between someone correcting you in like a rude way, and there's a difference in them. You know, I think if we were on a Discord and like, Say you messaged me on Discord saying, like, just let you know, this is how it works. I'd mm-hmm. rather that than you pull me up in front of everyone. See, I I don't enjoy that as much. Um, some of our players will message me things while we're playing, and I can, uh, for, for, like, private yeah, yeah, character yeah. things, and I can kind of compartmentalise. Mm-hmm. But if it's rules and stuff, like, it, if I'm uh, espousing and I'm you know Good delivering one. thank you let's yeah. see joe did leave me with something if i'm giving out stuff you know whether it's a setting or, or a flavor text or describing a combat or giving out a rules conjecture or whatever mm. and someone um comes in on my screen and i hear that or i see it come up i will my attention goes and i will lose my place yeah but that's me personally mm-hmm. so it, i think that's a good um course of action depending on the person and the situation. Yeah, maybe that's a good conversation to have with your party. Yeah. If you are a first-time DM, say, look, if I do get something wrong, I'd rather you do it in this way. I'd rather you tell me in this way than that way. Mm. Um, because personally, I think I would rather have the message. Maybe not when I was halfway through talking. Maybe when one of the, like, when we were role-playing or something. Yeah. I'd rather have the message then. And then I would not not that I would rather backtrack, that I would rather correct myself mm-hmm. after the fact mm-hmm. than have to stop and go, oh, okay, uh, blah, 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 and have to work it out in a new, different way. I think with a new DM, you just have to be very open to be able to have those conversations publicly because yeah. that's the, it's the best and easiest way to yeah. learn. Look, this has been a very nice um, intro. Uh, but not, not what we were talking about. Not what we were going to talk about, no. And this is a Legends and Lore episode today, mm. um, which I'm quite excited to do. I haven't done one in a while. We've only really done one like this before, so it's a bit overdue. And I had a message from a listener on Reddit, Dungeons and Nerds, very good name, asking if it would be possible to uh, do a show on or about Strad von Zarovich, who, mm. if you are a long listener of the show, you know that I'm a big fan of. Mm. And I've brought you in today because I know that you're a big fan of Strad. I am personally a big fan. You <laughs> basically love him. I was um, born in Barovia. Basically, yeah. You yeah. were forged by it. Yep. By the shadows and the shadow fell. Um, and it's never really left me, I'm not going to lie. No, we were talking about it this morning. <laughs> we were. So they've said, if not Strad, also Esmeralda would be an interesting one to learn oh. about. Yeah, so we can touch on Esmeralda a little bit. We'll focus on Strahd and we can talk about... Well, we'll talk about some of the characters within Curse of Strahd because Dungeons & Nerds is running Curse of Strahd, but we'll focus on okay. the big the big man himself, basically. So, let's start with his history, his life, both in our world and in his own. Mm-hmm. So, Strahd was the... It is the principal villain in the Ravenloft setting now as a note particularly because van richten's guide to ravenloft is coming Mm -hmm. out there are there was a time created by tracy hickman oh i forget the names of the creators i should know it because they are legends um tracy and i forget the other name uh, oh, Tracy be, Hickman and I'm going to be slated for this Margaret Wise I believe how dare you creators of <laughs> Ravenloft right Creator, yeah. creators of that setting so they created the 
adventure that was basically a home game for mm-hmm. Tracy Hickman. He ran it every Halloween, which is where Stroud Must Die Tonight yeah. sort of evol- evolved from, mm-hmm. where his players would go into Castle Ravenloft and they would have to survive or kill Count Strahd von Zarevich. Um, he was working for TSR, who were the original owners of Dungeons & Dragons, the creators, Gary Gygax's company, mm-hmm. and they brought Ravenloft into the D&D mythos, I suppose you could say. Um, over time, it has developed and changed, and of course, 5th edition brought us Curse of Strahd, which was an adventure built around the castle, the villain, and Barovia. Mm-hmm. Now, Ravenloft is, well, so this is, this is where it's a bit fuzzy. So Barovia is a place, right? And, and also... A town, a yes. Town. <laughs> a town within the place. Barovia is an area, like a big map, right? Mm-hmm. And Castle Ravenloft is in Bar- Barovia. The town. No, it's above the town. It's in Barovia, the place. Oh my God, okay. <laughs> it's, it's a thousand feet above the town of Barovia. Yes, I remember. Mm-hmm. And that place supposedly was at some point from a, fl- uh, a different world, far off world, uh, with its own people and race. And uh, some things happened, which we'll get into, and it was transported into the Domains of Dread. The Domains of Dread are what we will be lovingly looking at during mm-hmm. our read-through of Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft. Now, before... They have been called the Domains of Dread, mm-hmm. and Ravenloft has been a Domain of Dread. Mm-hmm. It seems now, and in the past sort of decade, Ravenloft has become another name for the Domains of Dread, and Barovia is Strahd's Domain of Dread. So it's kind of like, right, depends okay. where you look and who you ask. So the naming is a bit conjectured. It's all over the place. Mm-hmm. Either way. Castle Ravenloft is within the place of Barovia, and that is Strahd von Zarevich's domain of dread. He is the Dreadlord. We'll oh, talk about this section. more yeah. with the book, but the domains of dread are basically um, a section of pl- like places, demi planes, sometimes, depending on the edition, within the Shadowfell, surrounded by the mists that mm-hmm. sort of pull you in and out of them. And they are uh, overlooked and controlled by the dark powers who are left very lovingly vague so that the players can be the dm can be yeah. like the dark powers oh they've done <laughs> something um which is how the dreadlords can kind of come back to life like you could kill strad and feel good about it but then next halloween oh, the dark powers have brought him back yeah so it's like well there you go um they are evil it's I, I I kind of changed my mind about this because they they basically trap in and curse evil people, but mm. they are also evil dark powers. So it's kind of weird. But they um, g- give gifts to the dreadlords, and the dreadlords do some things, and then they become trapped within their own domains, and they are very much in charge and in power of those domains. But the dread the the dark powers kind of have a hold over them. Mm. So Strahd von Zarevich was a count. He comes from a royal bloodline uh, in Barovia. He had a brother called Sergei. He had mm. a father and a mother whose names I have forgotten. Um, I can probably look them up, actually, for you right now while I'm talking. I don't think his mother was... No, never mind. Were you going to say Tatiana? Mm. Nope, that's not his mother. Um, he has a uh, mother and father. The father is uh, very... No, I wasn't going to say Tatiana. I was going to say the name of his... Woman. <laughs> his woman? Yeah. Tatiana is his love. What, what are you thinking? Maybe it isn't. I don't know. I can't think of the name off the top of my head. Okay. Worry. Well, he has... Um, <laughs> so he has a mum and dad. His dad is very powerful. His mum is very beautiful. And they rule over the place. Um, he is very accomplished in uh, war. He's very smart. He's, you know, like... <laughs> quite handsome he's you know he's a count he lives a count's life and he falls in love with the woman who is betrothed to sergey tatiana Mm -hmm. he um he has a bit of a sorted history if you look at the canon of the gun realms a number of people have gone to barovia and dealt with him in the past and stuff Mm -hmm. he uh gets to the point where he uh, talks to or communicates with the dark powers um they give him power. They give him strength and and magic. 
Um, but it's important to say that he was also a necromancer before this. He's also a wizard. Uh, we'll get back to that. He uh, goes a bit mad, um, has a fight with his brother and kills him. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think in my mind, it happens very dramatically on a rainy night with the thunder and the lightning in a storm. and, the, and it's on that. a balcony. I think it was on the cliff edge. Potentially. I feel like I remember. But I what I do know sure. is that Tatiana <laughs> finds them. Strahd says, you know, we can be together now. You know, you and my, we are, we are soulmates. We are meant to be. Forget about my brother. He's dead. And she throws herself off the balcony and kills herself. Um, this is very tragic. Strahd goes through uh, a lot of pain. Um, I'm not entirely sure, or I couldn't find when I re-looked up Strahd's story, what happened to his mother and father. I know that they die at some point. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think that's due to like just normal circumstances. Uh, and he, um, he becomes a vampire. It's a little bit vague whether he is killed or whether he kills himself or whatever, but the dark powers curse him into a life of undeath and so he becomes a very powerful vampire lord and he rules over castle ravenloft and he rules over barovia and then the plane is transported into the domains of dread and it becomes his dread domain and he is imprisoned there and so he lives eternally trying to uh find love and peace and happiness um it's a very sad story. Yeah. It's a really, really tragic story. And um, because he's a vampire, he can't die. And the way that, especially in Curse of Strahd, how the story goes is that the mists and the domains kind of taunt him. Yeah. Um, you can't, the people who die in Barovia, especially in 5th edition's version of it, and it'll be interesting to see what the transition of this is in Van Richten's Guide, um, their souls don't move on. They kind of hang in the mists and people can be reborn. And so the story of the Curse of Strahd adventure is that Tatiana, her soul has reincarnated as Irina, Irina Koalana, I believe her surname is. Mm. And she is a woman who lives in Barovia. She's a Barovian woman. She has, you know, brother and father and all this, you know, she's just a person. And so Strahd becomes obsessed with her and wants to... Because she looks like Tatiana, doesn't she? More than that, though, she is Tatiana. Yeah. This is the thing. Mm. Um, I suppose we should have put a spoiler warning on this one, but she she is Tatiana. Maybe um, we'll do it at the beginning. Yeah, I'll, I'll put Maybe it Maybe you've already I'll, heard one. Yeah, I'll do it in the intro just for a <laughs> uh, So she, um, it, throughout the course of the adventure, uh, Strahd is trying to get her and take her into his castle and transform her into a vampire and, you know, live his life with her. Mm. Of course, Irina is Irina. She has this reincarnation. She is a reincarnation of Tatiana, but she is also herself. She is Irina. She's a different person. And so she, and much like Irina, is like, this guy's a creep. I don't want... Yeah, yeah she, she doesn't... He wants doesn't me. Want I don't it. want him. I don't want this. Yeah, it's it's like, go, go away. Mm. I'll pepper spray your eyes. Yeah. Toxic so, relationship. Yeah, very much so. Mm. Uh, but through the course of the adventure, if you're running it as written, it is... There's a, there you can take Irina to a place and her, she can reunite her soul can reunite with Sergei and she can move on if, if and that's how you kind of save you can save her that way you can mm. say we can get you out of here because you are reincarnated and in doing that the dark powers kind of allow you to do that because that that then pisses off Strahd and it makes his pain and anguish much worse mm. and so then he comes after you um yeah so that's kind of like the story he kind of lives this eternal groundhog day every three centuries where do you, my memory serves me rightly where does the the is it the, like the villagers just constantly throwing themselves off cliffs so like the ghosts of the villagers? yeah so in um, i remember that moment so like vividly in yeah. the fifth edition curse of stride adventure there is um there's a church that sits a thousand feet below the cliff that the castle sits on and uh, every night i don't think it's every night but very like often full moon or something yeah something like that um there are that's it you've sparked a memory there we go strad when he killed his brother the people uh became a mob and went up to kill yes. him and they killed him and when you when to become a vampire there's kind of this loose ruling it's kind of, it's left up to the dm to decide but there's kind of this loose canon that you have to 
kill someone you love and then be killed in hatred to then be reborn as a vampire. Mm. And so the mob come up and they kill him. And every night or every film, or whatever it is, the spirits of those people rise from the graveyard. They um, head up to the castle and they reenact their mob fight. Strahd, when he came back as a vampire, when he was reborn with his powers of charm and mm. uh, manipulation, uh, made them all throw themselves off the cliff. And so the ghosts relive that. They throw themselves off the cliff and fall to the thousand feet below. Yeah. So yeah, it's a very vivid moment. And of course, this is a very gothic horror campaign. Yeah. So there's a lot of stuff like that. But um, yeah, so it's it's kind of, it's that's kind of the story. That's kind of his like, his history. There are other bits. Uh, he has vampire brides. I believe there's three of three. them. Um, who are uh, just... I, I believe one of them was uh, Sam's mum. Yeah, one of them was Sam's mum. Yeah, <laughs> Sam's mum, yeah. Um, it's inside joke. Um, they... <laughs> Sorry, Sam. They, um, they aren't really delved into within the Curse of Strahd adventure. There's... Um, I couldn't find much history on them. They're just kind of like women that he turned into vampires within his like lust to find that love that he wants mm-hmm. and then of course it wasn't the same because they're not his soulmates in his eyes they're not Irina they're not Tatiana um there's also in the history a vampire that tran- uh, uh, transitioned herself into the um the mists she came through and her and Strad had a long relationship she taught him how to be a vampire and then she left uh that, that is not in the adventure that is yeah. something that you can find by deep diving into his deeper history online looking through all like the different cool. thousands of wiki ar- articles and things that's one of those things that i think I where that. yeah i think that's where like the books like the novels and the adventures and the yeah. comics will kind of cross over and stuff and the different adventures from different editions so mm. and like there's um uh the there's a company of adventurers who went in to kind of deal with him and they won and left and then he came back to life again and all this kind of stuff mm. so he um he's a very standard vampire stuff yeah standard vampire stuff <laughs> he's a very interesting villain because he definitely thinks he's the hero of his own story yeah you know he's he's fighting for love yeah he just wants mm. his life to be perfect and he mm. is also very proud he's very powerful um charming and he's very scary because he's charming mm. and he's beguiling mm. and he's a vampire. Like vampires are scary. But on top of that, like I said, he's a necromancer. Mm. So he's even more scary. He has the control of undead. Um, there's a very fun stat block for a Strahd zombie, which are zombies that Strahd creates that have a really cool feature where if you deal damage to them, their limbs can fall off and become other enemies. So That's cool. really cool. Yeah. So he's kind of extra scary, but then he's also got this connection to his his domain. Mm. And he's there's a, there's a line from the Tome of Strahd, which is like his big in-world lore. It's like his journal. Uh, in fact, he, he has a little padlock on it, mm-hmm. one of those little codes. Mm-hmm. Is um, it fluffy? Is it like yeah, pink? Yeah, it's got one of those yeah. pens built into the spine. It's got like a UV light, so you yeah. can like secret message. Yeah. So cute. Um, <laughs> But he, the, 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 the very famous line is, I am the ancient, I am the land. And that kind of comes in the fact that he can, obviously he can turn into a bat, he can call bats, he can call wolves. Um, mm. You know, he's got this connection to Barovia as well. Like he is Barovia. Um, and it's, it's made very clear to the players as soon as they step into that, oh, yes. that domain. It's all under his control. This is his playground. Yeah. Yeah. You're off on the back foot to begin with. Completely. There's uh a very unique way that he controls his land that's unlike any other villain I've ever seen. And that's by rolling some really nice dice. So he's got a beautiful set of actually Shadowfell plain shard dice because, you know, the Domains of Dreads are of course, within Shadowfell. the Shadowfell yeah. um, that he bought from the dice dungeon. And I've, I've begged Ben and Dave to tell me how they... They got those oh, through the through the veils and across the, the crystal spheres, but they won't tell me. He must have. They must have paid some hella shipping for that. Mm. And like, I I don't know. Maybe they've got a connection with Elminster or Morden Canaan or someone. But mm. and I've begged them for that. that I want that pen pal, but they just haven't passed it on. But hey, if those dice probably are good signed enough, some sort of contract though for that. Yeah, to be yeah fair. non-disclosure. Yeah. You can't you know, just give out the address. No, exactly. I mean, Morden Canaan's tower moves anyway. So, um, but look. <sighs> If if the dice dungeon dice are good enough for Strad von Zarovich, they are good enough for you. What are you waiting for? You can go and check them out at the dice dungeon.co.uk or dot com. Dot co.uk? There's a link in the description below. Just go oh to that my one. God. I'm I'm not good at this. 
All right. I don't know why they sponsor me. It's just because I've I'm beguiling. Ben and Dave, do you want to just sponsor my Etsy shop? <laughs> okay. Yeah, you can. I mean, if Instead, you want. like if you want. this is not working out. Okay. <laughs> Whoa, hang on. <laughs> You're the first guest to say that on the podcast. I'm joking. I'm joking. Um, but yeah, you can head to the website. There's a link in the description below. Go and click on it. Go and look at the dice. Go and get some and use the code we speak common for checkout. Strad didn't do that. That's where he missed out. So you'll be better than Strad by using that code. Um, and of course, he has to be very, very good at creative writing, our Strad, because he's got his journal and he knows that player characters are going to read it. I mean, how do you think he came up with I am the ancient eye in the land? Oh, come on. He went to describe.com. It's spelled D S C R Y B.com. Uh, where of course, of that himself. you know, he utilized the amazing creative writers they have on there and their 1500 scenes of places, locations and monsters to inspire his own writing. He's mm-hmm. probably got a heroic membership as well, mm-hmm. which uh, you can get with 10% off using the code common in the checkout. I should Link imagine he probably below. controls the lands to, to fit the descriptions. He probably did. Yeah. yeah. He probably just shifted them. Yeah. Mm. Could do that. He could do that. Mm. So... This is uh, this is one of my favorite characters because there's and this is how I played him. There's a lot of fun you can have with Strad being this coy kind of like cat and mouse relationship with yeah. the players, especially if you're running the whole adventure from a low level to a higher one. Um, with that being that like they they come into the realm and he they hear about him, they see the castle, the shadow of the castle on the uh, up above, they know. This guy on the front cover looks like a vampire. Like, what are we doing here? He's got a glass of red wine. It's probably blood. <laughs> you know, um, they know something's going on. And then he can appear in front of them. And mm. the first time he appears, he's lovely. Yeah. And he's like, really charming. Welcome to my home. You know, yeah. he's, he's. You fall in love with him a little bit. Okay. You did. Fine. You I were did. like, I like this guy. I he's did. not so bad. I fell in love with him a bit. I'm not going to lie. Um, and then. Don't want to talk about it. <laughs> he, he can appear to the players throughout the adventure and i plan to have him come up three times before yeah. he started hating you um and he the first time he appears he's like he's like charming and he he's like maybe watching you guys fight some wolves like leaning against the tree like seeing how you can i do. think he appeared to us like straight after we came out of the murder house yeah he did and he was death just house. outside death house murder house i mean it's basically the same i thing. think that's american horror story yeah okay so yeah, yeah. I you think came it was out as we house, came out the door, like bleeding and like nearly dead, and he was like clapping. Yes. He was like, "Well done." And it was impressive. Um, and I was like, "Wow." Yeah. <laughs> He's like, "Welcome to my land," and you, you were like, "Who are you?" And he was like, "I am Strad von Zarovich. You know, I'm, I am the Count." And he introduces himself, and he's polite and he's cordial. Yeah. Um, the second time, he's just like observing, has a little chat, sees how you're doing. The third time. Depending on what you're doing, I think we'd started to piss him off. You start to third. piss him off then, because then you start to intervene with Irina. Yeah. Um, I think we'd found Blinsky's. Blinsky, yes, the toy I think shop. We'd found the toy shop. Yeah, yeah, and, and you'd had you'd had the card reading with Madame Ava, and yeah. we're, we're starting to look for his uh, artifacts. Mm-hmm. Um, which he had caught on. And when you start doing that, he yeah. kind of thinks, tut, "Oh, okay, tut, tut. you're you're trying to." mess around now but this is the thing he's very much like he does this for fun mm. he, he when the mists give him adventurers he toys with them mm. and then he sets up how he's going to kill you and so as soon as you start collecting those artifacts he's like okay well you've stepped up to the plate i'm here the castle's right over there you come whenever you want and i think i think he did invite yes us. so that's what i was about to say he the invited best thing, us for like dinner the best thing he does Literally. is he yeah. sends you a letter yeah. you know a ghost cart turns up a horse-driven empty cart with no rider turns up and there's a letter and it's it's like i cordially invite you to mm. come and dine within the castle halls let us talk let us share wine and chat and it's like a really nice dinner invite and you guys were like no yeah we were like we'll just uh, get like all the steaks like wooden ones yeah. <laughs> before we before we go yeah uh, so then, then he's like, and then sure, we'll come around your house for dinner. But then you, you basically <laughs> say no and you, you turn him down and he's like offended. Mm-hmm. So, and then I think at that point you, you had um, freed Irina the third time he appeared. And this time he yeah. appeared and he was like, okay, I'm, I'm angry now. You've, yeah. you've intervened with my chance to reconnect with my love and I won't get another chance until she's re- resurrected again. And God knows how many years that's going to be. 
So now he's pissed, right? Yeah. Um, and this is where he appears for the first time and really puts the pain on because you guys, I think you guys were level five, maybe seven max between there. Um, yeah, probably. And you were running to the gates of not Valaki, the other town, um, and you uh, where where the chapel of Saint Markovia is, and you saw him come riding down the road on his nightmare, <gasps> which is a steed. Black flaming. steed flaming with steed, isn't it? flaming manes oh, so um, cool. that flies, and he was and he and he raised the, the dead and brought wolves and just literally. And at this point, he's kind of like you 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 tried to hurt him before, but he's just like bashed you away, mm. and like he turns up and he just drops a fireball on you and yeah. teleports behind one of your players and snaps the neck. Like I remember, he killed one of them, uh, one of the players, and so like he he puts the scare in you, yeah. and this is the thing. This is what's so great about this villain is that he can go from being this charming, wonderful oh, person psychopath. to a complete megalomaniac killer. Yeah. And that's what's scary about him. And in Barovia, mm -hmm. he can pop up anywhere. Yeah. Let's talk about his castle. <laughs> because Strahd's really cool. He's a cool villain. He's fucking hot. He's, I mean, yeah. He's got <laughs> amazing powers. He's a necromancer. And he's got a bitch in castle. <laughs> and those are not my words. Those are the words of Chris Perkins, who designed this adventure. So the castle is officially canon bitch in. Um, <laughs> and it really is. And I watched an interview with Chris. I think it was one of the D&D Beyond ones um, back when the adventure came out. And Chris said, the, the castle is not logically built. It's, no. it's mm. a maze. And he said, I asked Tracy hickman why and he said well that's because once you're in there he wants you to get disorientated he wants you yeah. to get lost um, because he knows where you are yeah you might not know where you are no. but he definitely will he knows exactly where you are so, so you get in his castle and it's there a trap. are it is a, it's a massive trap it's got it's got traps in it it's got a really cool elevator trap it's got a dungeon it's got a teleporter machine um, it's got the staircase that can go flat and send you flying down it has uh three hags who uh live in there there's random encounters that happen within the walls of the castle the gargoyles things like that you know all your mm. t typical kind of i like to think tropes. of uh the hags <laughs> i mean this is just the the nerd in me but the hags always remind like gave me visions of you know in percy jackson <laughs> No. They're the hags that like drive the taxi and they they share one eye that stays in the glove <laughs> compartment I have no idea what you're talking about. People will know what I mean. Okay. They're weird. I don't. I'm not with you. They're, but... they're, they're creepy and gross and funny. And, okay. But that's why I see like the, any hag now, that's just what I see. Yeah. So <laughs> they're in there. Sorry. Um, he's like, he's, he has, oh, careful. He has vampire spawn that are in there milling about. He has uh, Rohin, Rohindin. Oh, the his... crypt like man oh the his man servant is not a good word for it the crypt yeah he has a massive crypt, crypt that is... has his coffin his father and mothers the brides and it and has of lots of other people yeah really cool people too yeah um and i, I think actually we spent one session just opening every single one yeah which is not advice don't do that <laughs> don't do that also just don't waste the time <laughs> <laughs> i mean there is that <laughs> It took us so long. We read every single tombstone. Mm -hmm. We decided whether or not they were interesting enough. I think one of them was a painter. We yep. were like, yeah, but it might have a magic paint set. You know, the one that like... It makes things real. Yeah. You found the thigh bone of St. Markovia. <sighs> there is a luck blade hidden in there with a wish spell in it. I think I got that, didn't I? In when we did Stroud Must Die Tonight. We'll yes. get back to that. Um, there's, yeah, there's some real good stuff in there. There's also some real bad stuff that will mess you up real bad oh, yeah. if you're not careful. Oh, it did. But the castle's um it is a labyrinth, and it's got some really interesting places. And the maps in the for fifth edition are isometric; they're really nice. But you can't really. It's very difficult to run those as maps. Now I don't run maps anyway, mm. and I actually think that the castle works best in theater of the mind because you really feel lost and that is not a that's not a bug that's a feature yeah like you are meant to not really know where you are mm. and i remember that when you played the campaign properly when we did the full campaign you managed to kill strad get him to zero hit points but as a vampire 
he just transfers yeah. to his coffin and you have an hour before he wakes back up. Mm-hmm. So you then had to get from the there. very top tower to the crypts within an hour. And doing that was like that was so the hard stressful. Bit. Yeah. Killing him Killing him was very difficult, yeah. don't get me wrong. But it was the pressure that we then felt after that to go, ah, we don't actually we don't actually know where his crypt is. His his like final resting place actually is. Mm. So now we have to go find that. We should have found that first yeah. and then known where it was. But even then, f- getting to it is tricky. If we had, like, a ranger, would we have been able to have not get lost? No one, you, uh, you can't, a ranger's, because... you can't have a ranger come into a camp. Like, if, if you sat down and said, oh, yeah, we're playing Curse of Strahd, cool. My favourite terrain is Castle Ravenloft. <laughs> I'd be like, no, that's <laughs> my, not how that works. Terrain is Barovia. No, that's not how that works. <laughs> but, you know. Okay. Me just trying to cheat. If you'd have been like, oh, my, my favourite terrain is, is forest, I'd be like, okay, well, if you're in the Slavic woods, you're not going to get lost. Okay, so, yeah. You know. So if, it, like, it, you're going to get lost. Woods, something like that. Slavic? No. Slavic. Slavic? I can't, it's something Maybe? like that. It's uh, Slavic. Slavic. Not Slavic. Um, yeah, but so. It could be pronounced Slavic. Yeah, however you want to language. Yeah, it's your game. So. You do what you want. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, yeah, you will get lost. That's kind of the point. Yeah. Uh, there's, of course, the very interesting crystal heart within the castle. In the, the tallest point of the tower, a large beating crystal heart that gives him a buffer of HP, allows him to regenerate health each turn. Mm. Um, so he's got all these cool, iconic features that you can really, like, show off when I you're... Think both times we went for the heart. Yeah. So this is the thing. When we played Stroud Must Die Tonight, which is a really fun one shot halloween game for for just running the castle mm-hmm. and the combat with strad which you can look up online um i actually have uh, a dm's guide for it very roughly written um floating around the internet on my reddit that you can find um for when i ran it last year but there are different versions of it as well there's strad must yeah. die tonight strad must die tonight uh, again and strad must die in space which I is a spell jam variant. That. We're going to do that this year. Can't all wait for Halloween this year. So the plan. Okay, let me tell you the the standard one. So the standard Strahd must die tonight is the idea that the adventure starts with the players being pulled into, like on the in the carriage ride up to the castle in the middle of the storm. I did it with Van Richten in the in the in the cart, saying mm-hmm. like, he, Van Richten in my world has the voice of um, the client <laughs> from Mandalorian. What's his name? Uh, Werner Herzog. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the he's there, German. yeah, the creepy German voice. So he's there telling you like uh, what you need to do, and he says, you know, I had a reading from a from a fortune teller who told me mm-hmm. where the, that the items would be in this cryptic place. So That's go and amazing. find them, and uh, then he gets pulled out of the carriage by a gargoyle and falls to his death, and you are left on your own without the yep. the ancient vampire hunter. And so in you go. You have four hours of real time to get around the castle find those items and if you don't find them in time you are gonna fight strad however they are within in four hours he will come for you regardless right Mm -hmm. um and at at the end of every hour you hear a bell toll strad appears in front of you and offers you a boon yeah and you can take it if you want and so we ran that and i ran that for you guys it was a lot of fun the combat was very fun for me and a l- not so fun for you because when you fight Strahd, he's a vampire in his domain. He can literally merge into the walls. Yeah. He can come out from a, uh, from a different place where you thought he was. He can hover. He, he has spider climb. He can walk all over the ceilings and the walls. I think he was like going invisible. He can go invisible. He can cast spells. He had no idea where he was. He can turn into a bat. So he can play very sneakily mm. and come up behind you strike you and then get out of sorry get out of dodge Mm. or he can be very upfront and he can slash you grab you bite you and then drop a fireball on you like he can he can do very different types of combat and that's a lot of fun and i think i remember you guys were pretty close to spent and then you used the wish in the blade to give you all of your magic back yeah and you guys spent a good 20 minutes trying to work out your wording oh yeah because it had to be perfect yeah because you know i'd fuck you if it ben wasn't ben doesn't if we don't get the ins and outs of a wish spell 
exactly right if we don't have like what? pedantics yeah perfect he'll mess it up he'll just i don't know if we wish say if we wished for for all of our magic ability back which is what you did what at what point though yeah do you know what I mean? All, all of, of your magic magical ability. ability. When you were five? Yeah. Well, that's none. All of your magic ability from yesterday? Because then that's quite, quite a bit. A lot. But also, were you damaged yesterday? Did, did you, you have a long rest? At that did, point? You, did you cast any spells yesterday? Yeah. Do you want it back from halfway through the day or at the end of the day? Exactly. So we had to be so. I think I have the like wording. You have the wording somewhere, but you, you did a very good job, but you didn't. What you didn't stipulate was you said you wanted your potential magical powers back right you wanted your ma- all you said something like it was spell slots all of the and... spells that we have cast we want back like all the spells we started off this day with we want back before we stepped foot in the castle to be able to use now or something like something yeah i don't know the exact wording but the way it came out was that every single spell that you had cast since the moment you stepped into the since from before you stepped into the castle um so any spells that you didn't have that you had cast appeared around you on the floor in spell scrolls yeah so you had to randomly find the spell scroll open it and cast it mm-hmm. uh which you know sometimes i mean you pick i was up quite right intrigued one. though because at that point did we get a wish spell scroll no <laughs> was the answer to that <laughs> we were not gonna get two wishes no i would never allow that <laughs> i'm not uh I don't, I don't i'm not a masochist so that was stramus die tonight and that was a lot of fun and, and i think if you want an interesting villain to run uh, yeah. and then you want a tough combat encounter, you can make it really tough with Strava within his own castle. Strava dies night in space, which we're going to do this year. Oh. Are you all right? Yeah, I just knocked my drink. Mm. Um, <laughs> Strava dies night in space is a similar story where, um, <laughs> so this, this involves some spell jammer knowledge, so bear with me here. The idea. If you don't know, spell jammers are operated by things called helms. They're chairs, right? That you can use your magical <laughs> energy to create a vessel that can fly through space through the crystal spheres. If you don't know what crystal sphere is, it's fine. We'll talk about it another time. The premise for Stramus Dice Night in Space is that an illithid nautiloid, nautiloid, which is their ship, mm-hmm. has crashed in um, Barovia, in the Slavic woods, and the illithid has befriended Strad and said, "Hey, I want to go home." um he says yeah cool i want to understand this magical power so he takes a helm and he puts it on the tallest tip of the tower within the tallest part of the tower to make it a control room and the entire castle ravenloft lifts (laughs) out of the ground and becomes a spell jamming vessel that can hurtle through space wait wait so as wait gone is strad then leaving barovia well, okay, yes, but this is a one-shot Halloween event game, so we're going to forget that. So not canon. <laughs> so it's not canon at all, no. He's not leaving Barovia. It's, the helm is actually taking the whole of Barovia. Well, this is space. what happens. So within, <laughs> yeah. the, within the confines of the game, the characters arrive on the castle as it lifts off the ground and the courtyard lifts and breaks away and they see the world disappear behind them mm. and the fog then arrives around the castle. Oh, so cool. So that you can't <laughs> then like just jump off the castle yeah. that's flying away. But he does it because Irina is already in the castle. No, no, not that, sorry. Um... I'm getting my my versions mixed up. So he lifts it up and gets it away because Morden Canaan, who is within Barovia, has got Irina and said, "We can use this magic to escape. I'll take you to my world of of Greyhawk." So they get in a ship and off they go. And so Strata's says, "Mind Flayer, we'll fix it. Let's go, and I'll we'll follow, I'll, we'll follow them." So you arrive at the castle as he's hurtling through space, trying to catch onto them. And then the random encounters are things like an asteroid hits the tower, um, a party of gif hippo men appear <laughs> and start blasting their way through the calls. Scravers. Scravers arrive. Yeah, like things like that. So yeah. it becomes a very weird kind of cosmic cosmic horror <laughs> um, adventure. That's so cool. Uh, and the final fight happens. You know, you've got four hours. Let's. I mean, it doesn't work out with the mechanics of Spelljammer and Spelljamming speeds, but you've got in-game, you have like four, hour, four hours of real-life gameplay to get to the cockpit and kill strad or you um you arrive at, at greyhawk and you lose i mean i'm honestly just excited for for this year's strad costume 
I did wear a Stroud costume. Yeah, yes. we, we've got to go bigger and better this year, though. Yeah, we need to put more planning into it. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Your fake teeth didn't stay in. They didn't stay in, no. No. But, and then you got fake blood on your, your new white top. It was yeah, all very sad. Annoying. That was, oh, I was very sad when going to come out. <laughs> so look, so that's Strad uh, of me just telling you about him. Have you got any questions and things? Because I know that a lot of that information already exists out in the world, but that's a very like kind of overview, like a brief overview of who he is and, and what he kind of stands for and how he kind of operates mm-hmm. that charming cat and mouse relationship that you have with him. Mm-hmm. Do you have any thoughts, questions, queries, worries, concerns? I think like magical ability wise, mm-hmm. what's like, I mean, he can do pretty much anything in the castle, right? Yeah, so he has um he has lair actions and he has uh legendary actions as well. Let me just grab his stat block up here. So this is as written in the book. There are additions and changes to this that exist in the world. He's uh technically a challenge rank fifteen. I don't agree with that. Really? I think he's a bit he can be much worse than that, and he should be much worse than that. Yeah. He's got an actual honor of 16. He's got... Uh, Only 16? An average of 144 hit points. This is what I'm saying. In Stradmos Die Tonight, I beefed him up. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, he's got some gnarly stats. Uh, plus 15 on Arcana, plus 12 on Perception, plus 14 on Stealth. He's resistant to necrotic, bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing from non-magical attacks. Dark Vision, 120 feet, past Perception of 22, so it's very hard to hide from him. Mm. Uh, he's a shape changer, so he can change into a bat. He can change into a wolf. Uh, he has three legendary resistance. Misty escape, when he drops to zero hit points outside of his coffin, he transforms into a cloud of mist, as if through this shape changer feat, yeah. which he can do as well, through shape changer, and goes to his coffin. He regenerates 20 hit points at the start of his turn if he has at least one hit point and isn't in running water or sunlight. He has uh, a DC for spell saves of 18 with a plus 10 to hit. He is a ninth level spellcaster. As written, he's got uh, things like fog cloud, sleep, comprehend languages, detect thoughts, gust of wind, animate dead, fireball, uh, polymorph, invisibility, greater invisibility, blight, animate objects, Mm -hmm. scrying. He uses a lot within the Curse of Stride adventure. He's spider climb. He has some vampire weaknesses, so he can be harmed by running water, a stake to the heart. So now... He's sunlight (laughs) hypersensitivity. Then, sorry, let me just fill No, you in. go on, carry on. Multi-attack, he makes two attacks. Uh, he has an armor, unarmored strike in his vampire form, which is a plus nine to hit that does a lot of damage. He can bite as a bat or a vampire. He can charm you. He can use his children of the night once a day to magically call bats, rats, or wolves. His legendary actions are that he can move up to his speed without provoking opportunity attacks at the end of someone's turn. He, has an un- he can make an unarmed strike and he can bite. So he can get in position bite you then you can have your turn he can bite you again and move mm. like he's he's pretty strong um i don't know if i have my version of him at hand what were you gonna say while i look for it so <laughs> i and our group yes in general love to just do jammy things mm-hmm. that will really annoy the dm <laughs> yeah i'm aware of this now i keep seeing a meme on popular dnd meme accounts that as an artificer, mm-hmm. you could create like a fog machine <sighs> oh, I hate with this. holy water inside right. that could then create like an area of mm. damage, or I suppose at least a difficult area of terrain for him. Uh, because obviously they can replicate magic. Like uh, as an artificer, I mean, my artificer that I play can replicate magic items. I mean. There's there no sort is... of there's no fog machine, but we could get there with you know a dwarf that can forge, and we could you know do all of this. You would also need but... someone to bless the water. Yeah, we'd need a lot of holy water. Hmm. Um. Okay. So. Yeah. Now this is putting you on the spot and just challenging your DM. So skills. what are you saying? You're saying you're going to make a fog machine that creates an area of effect that's a cloud that's holy water. Like a yeah, like a fog cloud. Like think dry ice. So there are a couple of things. Across First of all, I would argue that the fog is no longer water. It has changed its I molecular get, I state. Come off it. It has changed its if molecular state. If you walk state. through fog, you get wet. Not always. Because it is fine, I don't fine know rain. What fog does to you, but it doesn't but do that to fine. me. <laughs> Shut up. It's fine rain that if it gets on you, it's like mist and fog is. It, it, you will get wet. 
sometimes. You ever had that like fluffy yeah, material? Yeah, not always, not always. So I would argue that. And it hits you like morning dew. I would also argue that your how big is this area? Because if it's the fog cloud spell, it's a bit much. Maybe like a five foot, like puff of whatever. Um, and also, holy water only does two d six damage. So yeah, but it would be a it would be like an AOE. Yeah, so that means it hits a bigger area. Yeah. But it's still only 2d6 damage. <laughs> so, you know, is per, it really worth it? Five foot scheme. <laughs> no, no. I mean, yeah, I'd let you... I mean, look, if you've got holy water, it's basically... what. Here's my thing. You, If you've got a bottle of holy water, you can just splash it on him, right? And How about, do like, damage. coating your weapons in holy water? <laughs> if you say I had a magic weapon... Holy water is not that kind of a item, I believe. Uh, no. I suppose it has to be more vis- viscous. The I- yeah, the idea <laughs> of the holy water is that you either splash it or you throw the, the cask, right? Because yeah. you think of like Van Helsing, like, kss, kss, yeah. like, stay back. The power of Christ compels you. Yeah. Um, but here's my question. Here's my, here's my point. If you mm-hmm. had a flask of holy water, you could just throw it on him and you do the 2d6 damage. Why are you going to the effort of making a fog cloud? To make an error of, of... To make it linger. Difficult terrain, yeah. No, it wouldn't be difficult terrain. I would say that you could... I would allow you to, with enough planning and thought, create a device that mm. uses the blessed holy water that, bear in mind, takes an hour to bless by a clerical paladin. Mm-hmm. You, you could would have need, a with You us, would though. need more than one flask of holy water to create a decent area of effect. Talk, yeah. And that area, depending on how much holy water you used, would adjust the size... If he starts or ends, if he starts his turn within the area, he'll take two d six damage from the fog. The fog okay. will last for. Can I move it? No. How are you going to move a fog cloud? Shh. Right. Okay. This is okay. Now you're making a gun that shoots fog. I'm saying you. I'm would... making a fog machine. Yeah, and it would put fog out you into can move an area. A fog machine. It would work as effectively as a fog cloud spell, where you say it's going to re- start from this area right and radiate out, and it stays there. That's what I'd like you to do. The funny war. Without thinking about it too much. Okay. Okay. So we've done that one. How about... Oh, fuck's sake. <laughs> I found my stat block for Strahd, by the way. We'll go through that in a minute. How about the rule that if a vampire was to wear an no. eye patch with a mirror no. on the inside, no. it could constantly see behind it? Right. Vampire cannot see their own reflection, correct? Correct. So it could see behind it? No. With one eye closed? No. Listen to me. Right. Mirror on the wall. Vampire stands in front of it. That mirror is refracting light from all around the room. Mm-hmm. It does not show the vampire. Correct. How about so the va- Hang on. So the vampire can <laughs> see behind it. Take that mirror. Make it smaller, right? Still works exactly the same way. Put it on an eye patch. It's still far away from the vampire. Works exactly the same way. Put it on its eye. You're blocking out You're the light. You're blocking out all the light. It is no longer reflecting it, any light. Okay. How so about instead... We inspect a gadget it. We have, we have like a helmet that has a flip down mirror. Then it would work. But why would you want that? Because then you could see behind you. Right. But, I, uh, what, from, but what's from my scarier? Point of view, what is scarier? Strad okay. looking normal, <laughs> knowing where everyone is within his own domain anyway, or Strad coming down the stairs wearing <laughs> no, a no, makeshift no, 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 helmet. They're good. <laughs> exactly. You suddenly you've taken gothic horror and you've made it comical. Uh, okay, but for the upcoming book, there's Van Richter's Dampfuzz. Guide. Dampfuzz. What are you asking me? There is so. Is it a playable race that you could be? A Dampfire, I believe that's what they're called. Oh, they're I like vampire, but spelled D A M P H I R E S. Oh, I hope that was right. Uh, I don't know. It probably wasn't. I know what you're asking. Me. Like, is that a playable race? And then could you be an artificer <laughs> dampfire that had an Inspector Gadget helmet with a flip down mirror, so you could always see behind you? So within folklore, a dampfire is like a half vampire. They're yeah. a they are a mix of the result between a vampire and a Oh, maybe they human. don't have the trait of not so having a reflection. So we'd have to wait and see what the mechanical benefits of playing that race, if you can play that race, are, and yeah. then go from there. But no, I would not allow it. No. Oh my God. No, I'm not going to have you wearing an eye patch so you can see behind you. If you want to have a mirror... Not an eye patch, a mirror. Wanna, yeah, if like you want to hold... a flip-down mirror. No, I'm not having you have a stupid helmet, but you can hold up a mirror and look. Yeah, cool, fine. 
I don't know. I need to see the results. <laughs> I need to see the stats. Of okay, so when we get Van Richten's guide, we can talk about this. We'll look it up. Yes, okay, fine. I promise that when we do our deep dive into Van Richten's guide, we will talk about whether a vampire can wear a, a mirror hat. Fabulous. That's I all ha- I need to know. I hate that this is what you've brought to this show. <laughs> and I know, I know, it's, I've seen the conversations online and I have elected to ignore them. Mm. But you've brought them to me now. Mm-hmm. And now I've had to put my foot down and make my position known. Okay, okay. So thanks for that. How? Let me, oh, go on. Go on. No, it's fine. No, I saw the smirk. What was it? Last one. So when we played the campaign, yeah, I got the sun. The sun sword. Sword. Right. Am I? I might be wrong. Uh, yeah. Is there like a spell that is some sort of like you know how you can like moonbeam? Is there? A... There is a sunlight spell. Yeah. Would that cause the same like searing? Because I don't, I just don't think the, any of us okay, have it. Okay, so the there's, time. this is the thing. The sun sword is there is is the, a magical weapon. There is the sun sword. There's also this a sword of sunlight. Like a, a, ah. a they're two different items. The sun sword from Curse of Strahd from Barovia is yeah. different to like a sword made of sunlight, which is another item in the DMG. They have different powers. Okay, they're similar, but they are different. Um, because the sun sword is. Um, like a Strahd artifact, it connects to his history. It's like the item that would kill him. It's like a special version. Mm. Uh, it's an artifact, not an item. Whereas the one in the DMG is an item. Yeah, uh, there are spells to create sunlight, and yes, they would hurt vampires. I think they have a ruling in their spells. I'm not sure. But I then, would check. it also, with it being in the Shadowfell, would that that would work? Right? You are being a little bit pedantic. I okay. think if a DM doesn't let you use a spell just because you're in a realm of darkness. That's not cool. Um, there's actually a very big line in Running Gothic Horror, and I would be surprised if they don't include a similar line in Van Richten's Guide about how the reason the campaign works and the reason Gothic Horror campaigns work is because there is moments of light throughout the darkness. Yeah. And what is more symbolic of the players bringing light to a, such a dark realm than one of them bringing yeah. sunlight to the realm for the first time in years? No, that's cool, yeah. I get and it. when the campaign ends, the whole thing is that the clouds part and the sun yeah. comes through when you kill Strahd. I mean, he will come back to life because of the dark powers, mm. but, you know. Yeah, no, that's cool. So I just just to cap off, because we've gone over a little bit, um, I did find my beefed up Strahd von Zarevich stat block. Sorry, it was just me talking about jammy items that I could yeah. make for the next Halloween. That's cool. I'm looking forward to, uh, I'm looking forward to it. So <laughs> the changes that I've made, uh, he has a 20 on his armor class. Um, he has 204 hit points. He has, uh, most of his things are the same. I changed his spells. So his spell list for my version were shield, fog cloud, sleep, detect thoughts, gust of wind, minor, uh, mirror image, animate dead, fireball, counter spell, lightning bolt, light, greater invisibility, polymorph, animate objects and scrying. Just a little switch up to make him a little bit more, uh, opportunistic and aggressive mm. um he still has his vampire weaknesses his beguiling gaze as a bonus action strad fixes his gaze on the creature i think i changed it slightly it allows him to charm people um yeah and then i think apart from that it's pretty much the same so i just beefed up his health a little bit in his armor class and changed his spells up to make him a little bit better for uh, actually fighting because in uh, in strad and Stye tonight he is preparing for combat that's the point mm. he's bringing you in to kill you and you're coming in to kill him so yeah, you can check that document out. If I remember, I will put it in the description below of this episode so you can check it out if you're interested. Cool. Have you got any other questions around Strahd and his history or anything like that before we close off? No, I think I'm good. Okay. I hope I haven't just talked about the very obvious things about Strahd for an hour. But um... Well, if not, they got the comedic value of, of my jammy items. That's so, true. He's a very fun character. I hope you have fun with that. He's... Um, <laughs> Yeah, please don't make that the legacy of this episode. <laughs> he's a very fun character. He's um he's got bitch in castle. He's very powerful. He's sexy. He's good looking. He's also scary as hell. He is manipulative. He's dark. He thinks he's the hero. And he's got a very tragic story. And you can you can do a lot with that. Actually, to close off and to prove that he's good, 
uh, there is a little fact I found out the other day when I was just refreshing my mind with him, um, and that is that he was voted one of the greatest villains in D&D of all time. So Definitely. And that is why he will keep coming back. I was more scared of him. Mm-hmm. Bold statement. Go on. Than the Xanata. I would agree. Yeah. Um, I think it was the sociopathic tendencies. Traits. Yeah. Because that is almost real. That's more, that's that's a real life scary situation. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Whereas, yeah, a what beholder do is, is. Do you never very come scary. across a beholder in real life? Uh, no. Ooh, count yourself lucky. <laughs> Whereas, like the sociopath, like you can. The serial think of killer the in him. Yeah. 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 Yeah, absolutely. And, and I that think shit that's is interesting. That's the um that's the beauty in in the horror setting. You can mm. find the scariness within our real world. Within the it? realism of it, yeah, mm. definitely. For sure. Okay. Well look, this has been a lot of fun. Um thank you for joining me yet again. I'm gonna get you back on maybe next week or a week or two because we were gonna do an episode last week. Yeah, and uh, the technology failed us again. <laughs> yeah, something else broke. Um, but now that I've got at least a mini kind of setup uh, mm-hmm. for us to work with, I'll get you on. And if this doesn't work again next week, then then we'll we'll, we'll hold it. But it's a good topic about for for, for newer DMs, and I want to go through it. So you'll hear a bit more of Phoebe in the future. In the meantime, if they want to find you, where can they go? You can find me on Twitter. Um, at just Phoebes. you can find me on instagram i am phoebe two wise and i also have a little small business little startup business that i have of my very own my instagram is um at handmade by hammond with underscores between each word and it is also my etsy shop handmade by hammond co and uh hammond with two m's Hammond with two M's, yes. And yeah, I make cute little handmade embroidered bags. I'm also looking into uh, doing like caps and hats. Artwork. And I also, yeah, I'm doing, currently bought some supplies today to do artwork. So we'll see how that goes. We're going to have canvases with like paint and like multimedia approach to art, which mm. is pretty cool. Yeah. And there mm. are D&D themed on there as well. There is a couple D&D thing. Yeah, a couple... I think we now have one D&D themed one left. We have, which is like a magical, mystical, like hands. Throwing dice. Throwing dice. I always, I see I see it more of a telekinesis dice. Oh, cool. Is what I see it yeah, as. Yeah, I get that. Um, and then we have a Lord of the Rings themed one. Uh, we have, I'm thinking for one of the art pieces to do a D20 geometric, really cool kind of. That'd be nice. Thing. You take that. requests too. Yep, and I do commissions. I'll make whatever you want. If you are like Ben and you have a girlfriend that's into D&D, but you want, like, cute D&D stuff. Like, yeah. everything for D&D is always red and black and dark and horrible, and we're going to make some... Hey, horrible. Not horrible. Like, like beautiful, but... But, I mean, I've got the... Pay- I've got, dark, I've got a, I've got you know, a Vecna or a Serac, a yeah. Beholder, and... A, and dragons. A, and a giant on my wall. We're going to yeah. do some cute pastel... Like kawaii bitch shit. Yeah, okay, cool. <laughs> Artwork for a nice girly D and D room. Nice. Because it doesn't exist. And we're gonna do it. We're gonna make it. Cool. Make All it right. happen. I like it. Go check it out how made by Hammond. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, if you want to support the show as ever just talking about us sharing us online is incredibly helpful gets us in front of more faces and ears and um, if you want to support us more directly there is the Patreon links in the description below where you get access to a really fun Discord server that is growing every single day we have a lot of conversations going on in there it's a lot of fun it we've made a lot of fun. friends through there as well we you really will have. become our friends yeah so if you want to if you, <laughs> if you listen to the show and you think I want to talk to these people I want to be their more friends. directly then um, <laughs> come do it come do it uh there is of course the twitter we speak common at we speak common at hotmail.com we speak common at hotmail.com and if you see it on reddit it's me so you can get in touch with me in any of those ways and instagram and instagram too yes cool well that'll be it for another week and hopefully the next time you hear from me will be a look into van richten's guide uh, as it releases pretty soon if not it will be another episode with that coming out around the days of that episode coming out so it'll either be next thursday or a little bit before we'll see it depends when the book finally gets here um i'm very excited ben's, <laughs> ben's keeping me up to date with the shipping so yeah cool um lovely 
thank you very much, Phoebe. Thank you very much, Ben. That was weird. <laughs> See you later. Bye. Thanks for listening today. If you like the show, do us a favor, leave us a like and review on your platform of choice and share us with your friends. Send us to your fellow DMs and players so that we can build our community even more. It really helps to get us out in front of more eyes. If you want to support the show, you can by joining our Patreon. Links can be found in the show description and the episode descriptions on all platforms. The music in the podcast is Street Dancing by Timecrawler82. It's licensed under a Creative Commons license by NC. You can find it on the Free Music Archive.